And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Well, welcome to the Weighing In Podcast, where we have a lot to talk about. We had a light heavyweight world title in boxing that went down in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. And then we also had the UFC fight night from the Apex, where it is boring. But the fights, the last <laughs> fight was fantastic, yes, incredible. Was. But I, I like the crowd. I mean, you need more crowd. Have, you know, 200 people is like, I'm sorry, just don't like it. Start taking it to small towns. Let people come. Let the fighters have some electricity in there. The apex is done. <laughs> it's not done, Johnny. <laughs> it's gonna make a comeback in 2025. It's it gonna probably be full blown, is. bro. It's probably. gonna be full blown. Uh. Just let's be honest, man. They're bringing masks back in California, so yeah. it's a matter of time before it spreads to the East Coast. <laughs> yeah, it ain't spreading, man. Oh, it's gonna get into Vegas, and we'll be back in the apex in no time, my friend. Mass <laughs> mass <laughs> mandates are back in action. No, anyway, let them let them have fun. <laughs> It was, uh, hey man, this show is brought to you by Bet US, and as well as OnlyFans, as you guys can see here, we're supporting the OnlyFans. All right, want to let you guys know we are uh, continue our partnership with them for another year. So go ahead and subscribe to us over there. Having a blast, man, over there right now. So, and uh, just with the MMA world and the combat, come on, industry, not anything else. Ladies I and don't gentlemen. know, man. Our our man Keto George, he's doing yeah. some stuff, man. He's been oh. he's been looking at OnlyFans <laughs> and then trying to replicate it in his world. Let's go, George. It's like the Kama Sutra. Uh, (laughs) Man, I'm hearing, I'm hearing like people are making a ton of money over there. You know, I didn't know this, man. There was, um, there's only the top five companies with credit card and transactions. Number one, obviously, would be Amazon. Amazon. Number two is OnlyFans. Insane. Insane. Absolutely insane, John. But I was, you know, and I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it's true. But I was, I'm, I had my phone right, and I'm looking through things, and I, it's, I'm on X, and it's got this thing, and it's, I'm reading, and how much money did you make in your in your first 48 hours? I'm like, oh, pretty girl, right? Pretty girl, and I'm like, 40, 48 hours. Yeah, a million dollars. Yes. Yeah. No, no, Freaking John. Let me, let me give you. No, let me tell ridiculous. you this. Let me tell you this. Uh from a very reliable, reliable source, uh, Paige Van Zandt. She yeah. signed a very lucrative contract with them because yeah. she left the platform she was with. Uh, I, I know I know what she made. I'm not going to yeah. say it, but I know what she I'm made. Not, I know, exactly, exactly. But yeah. I'm simply saying, I will say this, though. She did a great job when she first announced that she was coming on. What she did was she gave her page out for three days. I think it was three days for free. Everyone signs up. Everyone subscribed to her channel. She took all those emails and she basically sent all those emails a discount code for her clothing line. And she made almost double what she made. Well, hold on. I got to figure she made a lot of money as far as the entire thing because Austin Vanford has not fought forever. (laughs) He is retired and I don't blame him. Good job. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. All, all he does is do a podcast now with her so good for That's him awesome. man. good for him he, man. he is a he is as they say a protected man now he's, okay. he's taken care of he's kept they call they call kept. being kept thank you very what kept. you know about being kept there george keto george what you know about being kept he's got a banana right now <laughs> I keep, I keep a few things, you know, you I keep, keep a few, few things. things. Yeah. I mean, she, uh, yeah, but I mean, they're doing their podcast together. They're, they're a hilarious couple, man. All the stuff they were doing during COVID was hilarious. Oh, oh that but, was, you know, the take on, I guess the take on with, uh, OF only fans is just that like everyone's, Oh, it's a porn side. It's this, it's that there's a lot of nudity there. There's people that make money selling pictures of their feet there. You know, and the original start of OnlyFans was um was started off being a soccer platform where coaches and high level yeah. um soccer people would go on so there they and could sports. Get, yeah. yeah. So That's they cool. would basically sell their their content to, for private lessons or they would sell their content for people that had questions like, Hey, what do I do in this situation, this situation? And a true professional or a true coach, you know, like a professional coach would actually reply back to them with a video, um, you know, or and or you know, just a, a text thread basically saying like, hey, this is how you do it. 
And this is what I would do in these two, these types of situations and people could pay, Hey, here's a hundred bucks. Here's 200 bucks for your, for your 22nd clip or whatever of how to get past this one thing that I'm having problems with, you know? And I think if fighters start to utilize that a little bit more, I know everyone's like, Oh, we'll put your stuff on Instagram. They don't fucking pay shit. No. So, you know, and like, Oh, you can get it on YouTube. Yeah. You can get the generic version on YouTube. I mean, what you get on OnlyFans, you have an opportunity to ask the questions, have the questions answered, and then turn around and rebuttal that question too. Like you can have an actual real conversation with somebody on there that, well, you know, that, and it's that, not, that but it's not only that, question. it's when you, you look at YouTube and stuff that, you know, there's a, there's a money end to it, Absolutely. but it's very little as far yeah. as YouTube takes most of it. If with the OnlyFans, it's, it's an 80, 20, the other way, as far as yeah. what you're doing and stuff. I don't know. I, mean, the, the, I, I do know, John. I just looked over the new <laughs> YouTube's new um, split with their with with their uh, with uh, their what are we called influencers? We're basically called influencers now, John. You and I. I'm an um, influencer. <laughs> yeah. I can't but, even influence my fucking grandkids. Go ahead, George. Look like you have something to say. <laughs> No, nah, I was just agreeing. You yeah, guys, you guys do YouTube. You're influencers. Yeah, so that <laughs> definitely not. I am not media, and I am definitely not an influencer. Uh, you you're only an influencer. fans and YouTube. You are an influencer. Yeah. Oh, uh, dude, I don't want to hear that anymore. The now. AdSense split that they take now from YouTube, I want to say, is like fifty-eight to forty-two or something like that. So they're getting forty-two percent of your money off the AdSense. YouTube yeah. is. You take it over to OF, right? And OF is basically giving you 80% and they're taking 20%. It doesn't matter what the content is. Whatever content you provide, you know, we take 80, uh, you take, you take 80, we, you and I take 80 and they get, you know, and they get, they take 20. So I like that. Fee. And we like, like that, that deal. So that was a big reason why it blew up during the COVID situation is, um, you know, all the other stuff was shut down. And people were having a hard time making videos because there was no world, there was no studios to go to. People couldn't get in, gather in small groups. It was, it was a big mess. Anyways, look. However, I just think that it, it could end up being a good platform for athletes to share their content and for fans to actually get connected with with athletes. And that's always been what, our push since we signed with them. Let me ask you something. When you know, you brought up the whole COVID thing and what people were doing and stuff, did you make any good videos during COVID? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I did a couple. I did one with Podcast Dave called uh, "Alone to uh, Ho- what Was It Home Alone Alone Together." It was Alone a Together. It, yeah, we, we did like I think we did like six or seven I of those videos. It was the greatest. It was uh, Dave was obviously a lot fatter than he is now. He didn't wasn't running as much back then. <laughs> no, he wasn't. But it was great, man, watching him die. It was great watching him die. Oh, now he's all in this runner funny. high, you know, runner high bullshit, like something you'd see an old forty year old lady talking about. But that's that's podcast day. I love it. I, I I did one with my wife that was fucking hysterical. I and think we, I remember. I can't. I, sorry, I know you did. I can't remember what was it. Go ahead, explain we, to me. We did a competition. It was sitting outside, and, she, and she's the one. Everyone was like all over my ass, like, "Oh man, I can't believe that you talked to your wife and didn't do that." I go, dude, I had nothing to do with it. She's the one that wanted to do it. I kept telling her, no, let's not, no. She, she goes, she says, you know, I want to do this thing, you know, basically Rochambeau, right? And then we're going to have, you know, a pillow there. The pillow is going to have, like, powder, you know? And then once you put powder, then you're going to put, like, whipped cream on top of the powder. And then from whipped cream, you're going to put, like, honey or peanut butter or whatever. And then you're going to put, like, eggs and... And I go, and we're going to fucking smash our faces into this. If you, if you want to do that, let's do it. I, dude, oh. I was laughing my ass off doing this thing. It was funnier than shit. And the best part is I want everyone oh, except for one, geez. right? And, I, and then she's like, you know, that's not fair. We, whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean not fair? So... <laughs> You guys, I'll, I'll try to pull that one up. I'll have Keto George. That's a great one. Try to put that. I do one remember out it was it's like fucking something. funny. That's it was. Hilarious. It was. It was kind of like when we did the Pocky Chip Challenge. That was. Oh, yeah. That was funny. You were funny. It, it was. I wasn't funny, but you were fucking. It funny. was cool. It was cool until we got to the end and my stomach started seizing up, and then I, I had to throw up. It was like it was like a. It was like that wasn't. It was like worse than a dry heave. I felt like I was getting the. What's that stuff that they have in your in your stomach that they say when you throw bile? Up? Yeah, yeah bile. I felt like that's yeah. what was coming You're out. Just it wasn't cramping. like them. I didn't get any of the. Yeah, it was horrible, man. It was. A, it was horrible. I said. I said. <laughs> it was like having menstrual cramps, but. I mean, <laughs> 
<laughs> that's what it felt like. I was like, uh, holy shit. Funny. You know, then I explained, I explained to like my wife, I'm like, you know, like you, when you have your menstrual cramps, it's like, it's now you're, you're finally Dude, hold it. a little bit of that. Hold pain. it. Menstrual cramps. Did you see DC? Oh, I thought it was with amazing. The thing. Oh, the, no, the best part. Did you see that whole thing? Because yeah. they had, oh, I, I want to say the, the one dude went to level nine. Oh, okay. And then DC went to level 12, right? It has 40 Weidman, levels, right? Or 20? 30. 30. Okay. Weidman goes to level 15, and Laura Sanko's sitting there with a level 30, just like, shut it. up. Oh, yeah, dude. Man, she's just a put savage. him to shame, man. Just a savage. She's a fucking savage. I love it. I loved it. And I go, yep, Laura Sanko whipped all their asses. They can I sit there it. and say whatever they want. I'm a world champion. She just beats your ass. She's fucking awesome, man. I love her. Uh, she oh, did some God. stuff with Train Alta, you know, and uh, she yeah. did some stuff at the UFC facility in San Jose where I was at and stuff. So she, uh, She's a stud. She's awesome. She's great. Yeah, she taught like a, a small, person. she's taught like a clinic, not a clinic, but like a technique there, a couple of techniques there at the jiu-jitsu classes. Went and had dinner with her and uh, some of the CEOs and CFOs from uh, Train Alta. She's fantastic, man. We've, we've yeah. tried to get her on here a couple of times. She was committed to it, but then now the Dana White Contender Series, she was announcing the Dana White Contender Series yeah. last year. Is she still doing it this year? Yeah. Okay, so she's still, you know, she's doing that. I wasn't sure if she got bumped up now full-time to just the, commentating uh, it so yeah the commentator yeah yeah no i'm saying bumped up full time to just commentating the bigger shows now and not not just dana white but yeah. good for her man she's Let's awesome man. i love her yeah. sweet sweet person all right yeah. hey just want to let everyone know thank you guys so much for uh, continuing to support us please hit the subscribe button become a member also you guys can join our, our memberships here on youtube memberships are 4.99 which we give giveaways for so we'll do like a monthly giveaway which we need to come up with one here pretty soon you still owe uh, Alejandro. Alex, you haven't sent nice. Alejandro nothing. I have it because I have it. I, I'm trying to find his address that you sent me. I, I I'll can't find it, it again because I'll it's in it a bunch again. of. We're in a bunch of different chats. We have the clips chat. We have the three of us chat. We have the the one uh, the news chat. The clips chat. We've got all these chat general information chat. A lot of chat going on here. I'm like, dude, can we just? Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, I, uh, but then we have one that we have a chat with Miss McCarthy so she can keep track of John's stuff because John doesn't keep track of shit. So this is true. This is true. Not too All old. right, guys. Thank you guys so much. Please hit that subscribe button. Become a member. Um, you know, our four ninety nine is the one that gives we we do our giveaways once a month, and then the one ninety nine is to get the little icon. So we do our super chats on Tuesday for our live shows. We obviously get to your guys' questions first. So I want to thank you guys so much for always supporting us. And we're having a blast doing this, man. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it rolling. Speaking we of rolling. Oh, Speaking now he's talking some... Burt Watson. We should get yeah. we should get Bert on the on our podcast. Yes, we should. Just because Bert's a great man. What's Speaking, up, George? Speaking of rolling, I am feeling better right now. I've yes. been sick this week in and out the hospital. I didn't know I, if you I, wanted anyone to know. Yeah, I don't care. I, I'm a working man. I, I work I'm my ass off. I get, I'll be here rain, sleep, anything. <laughs> no. But, you know, what's been really helping me, staying hydrated with element, staying salty, you have been saving my butt. Yeah. You saving right our here, butt, baby. Guys. Stay salty, ladies and gentlemen, Ooh, with the element. Salty, my milligrams, friend. Sodium, two hundred milligrams, of potassium, and sixty milligrams of magnesium. I want to thank you guys. Doesn't you. taste good when it's thrown up, but it tastes delicious going in. <laughs> so Dude, I saying, love it. Doesn't taste good coming back, huh? Uh, <laughs> Not as good as coming in. A little, little harsher. A little harsher. A little bit. A little mild. A little bit <laughs> different in the salt. That's nice. yeah. Um. Great product. Uh, son's been using it for soccer and lacrosse. He's doing two a days now. So one soccer, he had two soccer games today. One and a practice. He'll have a two soccer. He'll have a soccer game tomorrow and a practice for lacrosse. So it definitely keeps him hydrated. Uh, I notice a difference too when he drinks it, uh, as well as for myself. And uh, John, the last thing I want to talk about is I heard you got a you got a spa or sauna sent to your house, dude. dude hold, on, hold on, how is this on. thing? Hold on, you. I'm I will send. Here, I'll send you a picture. Man, hold I'm on, waiting for on, I'm on. waiting for mine. I heard it's no, awesome. no, no. You don't need yours. Only I need one. Tennessee trip for the boys. <laughs> yes. Let's see. Hold on. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. While yeah. we're waiting, it's coming your remind, way. Hold on. I want to remind everyone: Bet US two first Boom. deposit, you get 150 percent back on the two thousand dollars. Next two. <laughs> It's 125%. Use our 
code YouTube one fifty one five zero. And yeah, I baby. love you guys, Bet US. I can't wait to get some merch. I'll did wear it every it? day. Did you see it? Did you get it? Yeah. Did you build that platform? I did. And then they brought the little the thing that it sits on. Yeah, it sits. It's got its own little base. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. That's nice, John. They dropped it off. I had oh. to put it, put it up on that thing though. Oh, look at but that. yeah, look at that dude. It's cool as hell, man. And it's got a little. It's got a wood burning thing in the back. You got the rocks there. You put the the ladle. Boom. Damn, Century sauna, baby. barrel saunas, they are phenomenal. You could Century rent that out sauna. for two thousand a month All in California. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's called, it's a tiny home. Yeah, <laughs> it has a porch. That's awesome. That yours, is, yours yeah, gonna be is. a lot bigger than mine. Mine won't have a porch. Uh, you know, they had the, the, as the guy delivered it because he was on his way down to Florida mm -hmm. um, for the hurricane. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me why he was going in that direction. I said, well, at least you won't hit any traffic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but he was going to, and, and he had one of the smaller ones that I figured that you were going to get. See, it was still cool. Really you cool. saw it? Yeah. No, I just, I, 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 yours. I, only, need, I only need a two person one. It'll just yeah. be me and my son pretty much. My, my daughter might. <laughs> Your wife won't in go in it? She might. She kind of likes the heat. You know, really? my daughter yeah. is very fickle right now. She's, she's at that age where she's. Oh, doesn't... she's a girl. She doesn't do anything she doesn't want to do. Yeah, but that's a girl. She's yeah, like, I'm like, get in the cold punch with me. Like, your brother and I are going to do the cold punch. She's like, nope. I'm Smart like, girl. Try to talk See, her. that's to what talk I love her. about her. We try to talk her into it. She just walks right back in the house. She's like, I don't even need to hear this nonsense. Get away from me. She's like, <laughs> a blessing and a curse. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, All right. Hey, well, so let's funny. go ahead and jump right into the UFC, the main event, Tatuwa Tyra versus Brandon Roy Vall. John, um, you know, I vote with Tyra to win this fight, but you kind of talked me into going with Tyra to win this fight. I well, wanted to go with Roy Vall, and you're like, oh, you know, and and you you know, you know, John, I can be swayed pretty easily, as you've known <laughs> over the years. Yes. But I chose Tyra to win this fight. But I was just it was a very good fight, by the way. That was a great fight. A very evenly matched fight. Man. The thing, the thing is, man, and, and let me I'm gonna give a perspective on this. Um I've trained with a lot of uh, world-class jiu-jitsu guys out of Japan. And there's something... I fought, I fought one of them, too, over in Japan in uh, Pride. There's something about them that is... I feel it's just different. I don't know if it's the strength. I don't know if it's the pressure. But their grappling is not like American-style grappling. They're, they're, nope. they're, it's not like Brazilian-style grappling. They have a different feel to them. Yeah, I agree. I, yeah, I, I don't. I don't know what it is. I can't. So when it's, I see, it's the flow, something, the, the way that they flow, and and when they start to feel a change in your position as you start to try to move, yeah, they're flowing to a better position most of the time, and that's where honestly, I looked at this fight going in, and I was like, I, I thought Roy Ball was better on the feet, and I thought that Tyra was better on the ground. And I thought, you know, not that I thought Roy Vall was bad on the ground. I just thought Tyrus pretty special on the ground. Yeah. The guy is just, but the, it was the difference in the fight was the ground. And when Roy Vall would be in a position on the ground, he was doing damage. He was trying to hurt Tyra where Tyra was trying to submit Brandon and he wasn't yeah. doing damage to him. And that really was where that fight kind of got away from Tyra is you didn't do enough damage to slow Brandon Royval down, yeah. you know, in a lot of it. And I thought that I, I enjoyed the fight completely. I thought that Brandon Royval showed just exactly how freaking tough he is because he was in some shitty positions at times. Yeah. And he was always trying to, you know, fight his way out of it, never giving in. I give it to Tyra. He was going after things. When he locked down his arms, and, you know, and Dominic and, and Michael were talking the whole time. They didn't even look at it. They didn't even say anything about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I was like, uh oh. And he still, nope, didn't get the choke, didn't get it at all. And you no. look and you go, man, I'll tell you what, that was, that was a hell of a performance by both. I, I look at Tyra and I do think someday that kid's going to be a world champion. He's yeah, that he's, good. He just I, needs to mature in certain areas. How old is he? By the way, twenty six. Jeez, he's a baby. Sixteen and one now after today, but um, I think he's twenty six. But not twenty six. Twenty four. Twenty four. Still a baby. Twenty four. Um, and for him to already be ranked, you know, or to be able to hit that that number one ranking position to try to fight, you know, against Roy Ball, who's ranked number yeah. one. I yep. think 
it says a lot about him. Yeah, it does. But what he needs, there, there's a lot of things he still needs to fix. I saw that today. He, he just, for some reason, can't seem to move his head offline. No. <laughs> Hold on. It's not that he can't. I don't think he knows how. I'm being honest. I mean, I don't think anyone's ever really talked to him as far as, hey, when you throw, I want you to take your head and slide here, slide here. Everything is about taking it off, the, and he doesn't. Yeah. He goes straight in a linear fashion, you know, in the stand up. Everything is linear, and he's coming straight at you, and he's going to throw shots. Yeah. But he threw a lot of shots, and Roy Vall countered a lot of them, you know, and it's because his head was right there to, to be hit. Yeah, I mean, but you could just see the level of the difference of grappling. When they hit the ground, his transitions to the back, his transitions to – I love what he did. He had the figure four. He started to lose the position. What he did was he reached inside the far side underhook, yeah. and he grabbed into the armpit, but then he also locked it. A lot of people just reach inside thinking the guy just kind of wiggles his arm out every once in a while. No. He locked it and just maintained that position. He went to the power half. Yeah, yeah until, until Roy Ball made a mistake and was able to get back his full back control. I thought he's a very smart young fighter. He's uh, smart beyond his years. Yeah. Uh, he's he's got a lot still to learn. Yeah, this was definitely like I, I guess in this stage in his career, I think of fighters that I think of situations that I was in. But fights when when you when you lose your first fight on how much it makes a difference. But for me, it wasn't my first fight, but it was the Clay Guida fight. It was the fight that changed my career and my the trajectory of my career. It was like. I was thinking I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. This young man seems very dedicated and focused. He just needs to, I think this loss will be like, okay, he obviously needs to work on his condition a little bit. He got, he got kind of tired. That was one. Yeah. Two, moving his head offline. I actually, let me reverse those. Number one, move your head offline. That should be the first thing you go back to the gym and work on. Yeah. Is just head movement. Just get it into a rhythm or something and then start breaking that rhythm with punches and combinations. And then as you get better at that, then working that rhythm of the head movement into, you know, uh, takedowns as well as punches and combinations. But right now, he doesn't have that. So there's that. And then um, the, I would say, I wonder if the, the, what I saw in the first round, it seemed like the stage was too big for him because that first round, he didn't do much. Yeah, but I, 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 I just, I always look at a five round fight. The first round is almost like a feel out. It's almost a gimme round in a lot of ways. You know, the, uh, someone, a lot of times guys just give it away. Yeah, but he I gave thought, it away to Roy Ball pretty easily. Uh, <laughs> not according to one of the judges. Sal D'Amato. I was like, what, dude, I, I, I didn't, was, I thought that was, I thought the, the, the fight was actually easy to score. Super easy. Okay. And the real question was, you know, all right, the third round. Brandon Royval was putting it on him. At the end, Tyra had yeah. a good choke, but it wasn't enough to make up for what happened from yep. Roy Vall. I would agree. Uh, through the whole thing. And then, and then the other question was, okay, was Tyra in the second round where he was on top of Roy Vall for the entire round, basically, was it a 10-8? Well, it was domination, but there was no damage. Yeah. He didn't do anything as far as being able to damage him and stuff. And so, yeah, there was domination, but. The duration of it was long, but no damage. You're not yeah. going to get the 10-8 there. I agree. I agree. The only way I see a 10-8 in grappling is if you're just chasing submission after submission. Yes. And, they, yeah. and the person's just happened to wiggling out. And like a couple of them were really close to the point where he was able to still kind of get out. But Man, his face was you, changing colors. Or, the simplest one to go is even real quick. That was Bryce Mitchell fought Charles Rosen. If you go and watch that first round, he's chasing him on submissions. Head and arm, it's tight. Rosa, just tough as hell, works his way out of it, right? Goes to a twister. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it was on. And that tw and Rosa worked his way out of the twister. He didn't tap. And then goes back to a head and arm, and that's the end of the round. And you look and you go, that's damaged, dude. I don't give a shit who you yeah. are. You get put in a twister and you're in it that long. If you've ever had it on, you're going to say, that's damaged. Yeah. <laughs> it hurts. You know, yep. My spine and my neck are not the same. I have enough problems as it is. <laughs> <laughs> boom nope that's you know but that's what you're looking for when it comes to grappling for a 10-8 come over here big boy let me give you a little twister I, I, you, i'd like to see you try to put me in a twister <laughs> oh man you know your body doesn't move like that anymore it takes oh, three or God, four no. of me to do it god no <laughs> <laughs> um, but look, I don't want to take in like we talked a lot about tyra but let's not take away from roy ball man he no a great fight fantastic First round, yeah. Also, I was, you know, the whole thing was, you know, he left Montoya mm -hmm. and I was like, ah, man, that really bothers me because I is, mm -hmm. you know, where is he mentally as far as it? 
I thought he he listened to he his coaches were great. You know, Alex Alexander Hernandez was one of them in the corner, but he listened to him. Everything was fine, no big deal. You know, everything that I thought could possibly be that thing. Eh, that's not a good thing for Brandon. No, he looked fantastic. Got my watermelon flavor. Whew. I love the watermelon. It's so good. Watermelon and grapefruit. Yeah, especially when it's cold. Whew. So good. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, let me know when you get. Let me know when you get your your pallet. You're supposed to be sending. I didn't pallet. get a pallet, but I got a couple boxes. Oh, did you? Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Bless you. Pardon. Uh, to me, I thought I agree with you. The fight was the easiest fight to score. Brandon mm-hmm. Royval won the first. Tyra won the uh, second. I think I thought Royval won the third. Tyra won the fourth. Going into the fifth, it was even. Yeah, pretty even. And then I thought Roy Vall really kind of stole the fight at the end. Oh, he did. Right. You know, probably the last minute and a half, he ended yep. up winning the fight. Yeah, but it was it easy. A, it was a great fight back and forth for a young man at 24 years old, undefeated. It sucks to lose your O, but man, it got does. So but it's like, so man, you're gonna, you, he's going to learn so much from that fight and the mistakes he made. And the, there was the one thing, and I thought Dominic was right in picking it up, was he did look tired at certain yeah. points in the fight. But he always came out of the round, the break, he was back, <laughs> which tells me he's in shape. Because there's only one way that you start that round looking fairly fresh is you're in shape. You're able to recover in that one minute of time, get that heart rate down about 20 beats per minute, 20 to 30 beats per minute more. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you said 20. Okay, go ahead. No, not getting it down to 20 to 30. Like, uh, but but from dead. being somewhere around 160 to where you're at 130, 129, yeah. something like that, Yep, that says you're in shape. Oh, yeah. yeah. Your heartbeat will get up to 180, somewhere in there, 180, 190, and then it'll nice. drop. If you get it to drop down, my, my task is always to try to get it to 120. So doing my sprints, get it to 165 and above, yeah. hold it for a minute at that pace, and then within that minute recovery time, try to get it down to 118, 122, somewhere in there if you could. Try to get it lower if you can over time. You could eventually can get it lower. But that's just all about preparation and uh, yeah. getting your body, training your, your body to do that. I like a piece of hair in my eye here. And I'm having it's a rough day today, buddy. It's, it's called an eyelash. <laughs> uh, Jeez, man. All right. Um, but uh, uh, I thought Brandon Royval looked great in the first round, bouncing his step. Was sticking the sticking and sticking jabbing and jab. moving, yeah. he looked good. The kicks were on point. Uh, Tyra looked like it was so much going on, so much action, so much movement. He just wasn't used to it. And Royval just looked fluid on his feet. Looked beautiful. Second round was able to control, get the takedown, control, and Whoa. dominate the whole round. Third round, I thought Royval did the best of you know sticking and moving, getting back well, he, to what he was. He was winning. putting it on him. Got away He's from putting the kicks, it on him in that is, third round. But his coach told him, "Let's not kick." He's going to try to take you down again because he had a good second round. Let's stay away from the kicks. Let's go back to the boxing. And the boxing was working. It was working for him perfectly. And he got taken down at the end. But regardless, I didn't think it was enough to win the round. It was, it was, it was great to see because it was, it was a close submission. But it wasn't that close. You know, it was harder to see because he was face down also. But it wasn't that close. Anyways, third round, Tyra got the control, did it again. Fifth round just wasn't enough. You know, he, like it was that edge, that edge. A little bit, he was, uh, Tyra was winning. Rival took over. Tyra was winning. Rival ended up getting the takedown with a minute and a half, I think, left. It was a great fight, man. Yeah. When you're looking at top level fighters. You want to see the back and forth. I know people want to see knockouts and finishes, but that, you know, what makes those things special is when you have two top fighters and it does happen. It's because it's so unexpected. It was so, un- it's, it's extremely unexpected to see a top five guy knock out another top five guy. Sure. Or female, okay? Yeah. It's just, it's very, it. that's what makes it so exciting. Like, oh, shit, he did it. Because it's so hard to do that. It's yeah. it's it's extremely hard, especially when you get in those lower weight classes, 155, 145, 35. The level is so high, and they can do everything. They can grapple. They can wrestle. And we saw that tonight, man. Ray Vall did it all tonight, you know, and so did Tyra. They, did, they, they fought a fantastic fight. Good fight for him. Tyra needs to work on some stuff. He's still young. Head movement, uh, you know. Now that that whole first five round fight thing damage. is out of the way, damage needs to you know, work just... on. When you're on the ground and you yeah. you don't get that submission right away, start damaging him. I want you to start putting hurt on him. He does that, man. It's going to change his game. Did you notice when uh, he had like the back? Sometimes he was like kind of looking out into the crowd. Yeah, like, almost like trying to figure out 
Boy, am I really in this fight right now? I don't know. I thought he was looking towards his coaches a couple of times and stuff, you know, when he was doing John, stuff. I, but. but I don't know. I think speaking from a fighter's experience, I've had those moments sometimes in a fight where like you get to the back and you're like, you're like, holy shit, I'm in the middle of a fight right now. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it is, but you look around, there's a k- arena full of people, not in this situation. There's probably 250, 250 people, but still there's people in here watching me fight. Yeah. This is nuts. Like you're talking about your dreams coming true, right? Like I'm, he's the main event at 24 years old in a UFC car that's being shown on, on national television, worldwide television, you know, if yeah. it depends on where you're at, but this kid's 24 years old, main eventing in the UFC. Fucking awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And this kid, I think there was moments where I felt like he was just looking in the crowd going, fuck, I'm here. <laughs> like you know i'm here you know he came up short but i'm 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 looking for some big things to come from him he's not he, he lost but he, he didn't lose anything no he's good, he lost man. the o big deal great fighter yeah uh okay so i lost the tyra bet because i had my punks parlay so i lost two of my three picks <laughs> it's all right ah it's driving happens. me nuts happens ah man yeah. ah, it's just hard. i gotta admit it though i did pick park though over brad tavares and the yeah. reason why I picked Park was because the same reason why I, I said this on my picks, on my punks parlay, is because I think Brad Tavares could have knocked him out in the first round. But I think that Park is one of those guys that he's willing to take damage. He's able to take damage. He's always the, shown that. And as the fight goes on, he tends to kind of overwhelm you and, yeah. and you slow down. Now, this should be called the fight. Iron Turtle. I love the Iron Turtle as, as a nickname, but he should be called the Iron Turtle Head. That because be man, his head is just hard. That dude, man, he takes a shot. He, I was surprised when Brad put him down at the beginning, but he got you know, got right back up. But the dude can take damage. He can take yeah. shots, and he just keeps on coming. Because the thing that makes him unusual, well, not unusual. The thing that makes him really <laughs> a good fighter is he it's, he doesn't have incredible power, or he doesn't have real speed. He has pressure. He's got a chin. And he says, I'm going to let you hit me so I can hit you. Mm-hmm. And he puts pressure on people and he makes them work. And eh, he's effective. Yeah, I agree. I think the the amount of pressure he puts. And you can see Tavares felt really uncomfortable having to take his step backs, having to put his back to the fence, fighting with that back foot off the fence line. <clears throat> That's very uncomfortable, especially if you're somebody that needs that space to sit down on your punch and really throw and then follow up with a two and a three. And that's what we were seeing from Tavares. He was having a hard time because sometimes what you want to do is you want to take a little half step back and then explode forward. We had nowhere to go. His back foot couldn't go any further. And so that made it very difficult. I always look when you have that type of, and especially when you're someone like Tavares, Tavares can wrestle. Yeah. Okay. He's got ground. But in his mind, it's, I want to have this range so I can use my stand up. And if you have someone like Park, you got to switch that up. And if he's going to yeah. crush that space so much, take advantage of the takedowns and put him on his back because he's bringing that ability to you, but he's not going to give you that range that you want. So you got to switch it up. And, I, and Brad just never did. He was always trying to look for that range in, in his striking. Yeah, I mean, no matter what, I'm going to always tune in to watch Brad Tavares because he's oh, yeah. a phenomenal he's fighter. A fighter. He always lays it on the line. He either tries to put you out on your shield or he goes out on his, you know, and in this situation, he couldn't quite find the range, but John, this was also a very close fight. Very close. I, if it would have went to Tavares, I actually wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have minded. No, you know, it was Same a here. close fight. And I thought it, they both fought hard. They both, you know, went after it. And so I wasn't upset when park got the call, but I wouldn't have been upset if Brad did. Yeah, I agree. You know, but then the next fight, man, was just utter domination. Holy Jesus. Jeez. I, I, I got to give it to Jared, though. Jared good at man. Man, he took some shots in this thing. Some of the Ooh. elbows. What? Njikawani against? Oh, oh, I, oh, that's not on my thing here. Sorry, I am I was looking at the Grant Dawson and Hoffa uh, Garcia. No, that Sorry, was before. I didn't, yeah, yeah, huh? No, on my on my thing, that's not that's not on here. It's on, it's like further down. Sorry. <clears throat> I'm looking on SureDog, and it has them on, like, opening the main card. Oh, no, no. But I know where you're at. Go ahead. Yeah. Daniel Rodriguez on the card. Okay. And Jikawani and... Uh... And Jikawani against Jared Good. <laughs> My God. And Jikawani put it on him with some fucking clinch work. The knees he was the getting knees. hit with. 
to the midsection. There was a couple of them, Josh. You know, oh, that fucking hurt. There's no air there. You know, and you could see by his bodily reaction. Oh, yeah. That, oh, yeah it's, yeah, he, he's sucking, trying to get air in, in right now. Can't do it. Yeah. The elbows and everything. I was surprised that Cheedy couldn't put him away, though. I'll, I'll give it to Jared, man. You're tough as hell, dude, because there was moments that if you wanted to just give it up, you you, they, you had the opportunities. Nope, stuck in there, tough as hell. And uh, But you played right into Cheedy's game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would have thought he would have had better control when he did get the takedowns. Cause you got a takedown right off the bat. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the way to normally control those guys is not to stay in their guard. It's to kind of get them into half guard position, far side underhook, and just make them work. They're stuck. Focus yeah, that on half that. guard, especially if you can use the half guard, you know, and, and clamp down on that leg, mm-hmm. putting pressure down with your hips, hard to move. Yeah, you get them into a full guard position. They're just so long. They can work their legs up. They can work their feet on your on their hips and kick you back. They make space that way. They frame you away with their forearms. You put them into a half guard situation. You're really kind of taking away their length. Sometimes they can work a little hook sweep position, but I think the, I don't know, it just, it didn't seem like Gooden had a whole lot of answers for what uh, Chitty was doing. Yeah. So, but, but uh, that was impressive. a straight domination from Chitty though. And then now next fight. Now you can say it. Grant Dawson, Dawson versus Garcia. Rafa Garcia. This is what we kind of talked about this one. And I was like, you know, you, were, you thought. I you thought know, Garcia, Garcia would have a better chance. And then I saw yeah. them in the cage together, John. And I was like, holy Different shit. Design. I, I knew Grant so, Dawson yeah. was big, but holy shit, he was yeah. way bigger. Yeah. yeah well. I mean, it looked it looked like Rafa should, Rafa should have been fighting at fucking 135. Yeah. That's how bad it looked. I was I like, agree. oh, this is not. Yeah, it's not going to go good. No. But, first take down, but, it, was, it was over after the first But Grant down. Dawson, he's a good fighter. He is. He, people got to give him credit, man. You know, he, he's had a couple of, the, you know, a couple of his losses. You know, the, the Bobby Green one was real fast. That, that can happen, you know. Anyone can get touched and hurt, but the dude can fight, and he, and he oh, can yeah. fight on the ground. He can fight on the, in the, on his feet. He's good. So, no, I agree. It, and it was then a nice uh, performance. It was dominant, man. I loved his speech afterwards to his wife, though. <clears throat> because I want I want to ju- like let me let me take a second to say this too. Is that I know a lot of fighters that chase tail all through Vegas. They they met girls in locations when they were doing signings and and they end up getting with those people and having they end up getting with those women and having kids with them or they end up you know marrying them and not having kids whatever it is and then obviously you know a lot of a majority of the time it ends up not working out like you need to find somebody that is that it factor you need to have find those people that that you know. And it's hard to tell. I think you fall in love with that situation, you think, but you can see it though. I think a lot of a lot of people you get blinded by. You know, I just <laughs> no, uh, what <laughs> from the movie Boomerang. Don't get pussy whoop whoop that pussy. Bang bang bang. Uh, <laughs> it just makes me. It makes me think like, don't get like that. And it's I know it's easier said than done, but it's yeah. it's one of those moments you've got to you you. I know that fighters see. They go, okay, look. Where did I meet you? First off, you need to get rid of the word fighters because you're talking about men. That, yeah, that might be true. <laughs> that might be true. I, I guess. Let's I guess the ultimate honest. goal is to just be able to look at someone and and, and really kind of look. I took when I took my wife out for our first date. I took her to Costco, and we just went around t- tasting the samples. Hold it! You went to Costco on a first date? Hell yeah! I said I want to see if you ride the- or die. I want to. <laughs> hey, the samples there are free, buddy. <laughs> oh, dude, that's horrible! You ride Walked or die. I, I, w- I went on a ride today on my bike on my motorcycle with my I wife. I saw that because you know my wife had back surgery and hasn't been able to do anything. So it was like, she goes, oh, "I'd like to go." Out. All right, and I said, "Well, you know, if, you, if I have to turn around, just tell me I turn around." Took her out there, and my ride or die. She was out there. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we were forty Costco, some man, years of being the on the back of a motorcycle. That she that's did, that so. crazy, man. That's oh, nuts. Dude. I had a bike in high school, and then I realized that they're very dangerous. <laughs> John, and I was living in Idaho at the time, going to high school there, and there's no there's no no helmet rule there. Yeah, yeah. So it was just yeah. my my hair was in the wind. Dude, I had one of those before before there was a helmet law in California. Uh huh. I had a damn this this would be like 1985. So it's a long fucking time ago. But I, I was a uh, I just bought a. 
Kawasaki Ninja 1000 was the hot bike, right? And I bought one, and I'm to, I'm rolling down. I'm actually going to meet my wife to go to to lunch, and I'm on this road called Peck Road. Never forget this damn thing. And there's nobody on the road. I mean, just nobody. I'm like, oh, this is fucking great. I'm you know, I'm not I'm not going super fast, right? I'm just cruising down there. And they see this car, and it's coming out of this parking lot that there's no one in the parking lot in this car. And it, it just decides to, yep, that, but it was black. <laughs> yeah, all black, of course. <laughs> and so car goes and, you know, pulls out and just stops right in my fucking plane, right? Yeah, that was it. That was the bike right there, baby. It was beautiful. It wasn't pretty after this because I buried that thing right into the side of her fucking driver's door. And I go flying over the roof, right? And so it was like, I, you know, I hit the ground and roll up, pop up, right? And I'm like, you know, and I look at her like, what the fuck, right? And I had one bang on my head from the roll. And it was like, you know, the, I looked the sheriff. They write this report, right? And it's P1, P2. P1 is the person that is responsible for the accident. P2 is the person that is the person that's not at fault. And so it's, you know, P1 driving and it gives all this direction you know p1 pulls out in front p1 stops p2 hits p1 p2 flies through air that's what it said <laughs> <laughs> great description that that was the witness account p2 flies through air oh, yeah no. p2 flew through air. i had i had i had uh brown boots that i was wearing and there was two streaks going right across the tank of my boots from the toes <laughs> from the shut audio. up Oh, dude, it's this beautiful lines going right down the tank of that bike, and then because the whole front end was gone. But yeah, yeah, look, there's only two kinds of riders: ones that are <laughs> bend down and ones that are going. That's just the way it is. <laughs> my uh, my stepdad lost his leg in a motorcycle accident. Yep. Yeah, it was they riding him and my mom were riding on a backcountry road. Nobody out there. A fucking hedgehog walks out in front of them. Oh yeah. Yeah, he fucking hit the hedgehog. Yeah. Went off. Got in an accident, tore up his leg. They get to the hospital, gets an infection in his leg. They have to amputate. I'm just like, ah, it sucks, man. Yep. It sucks, especially like I think at the age he was, he had just turned 55, I think. So basically trying to like have to learn how to rewalk and do all those things. It's just, that sucks. But yeah, ultimate, awesome, awesome guy though. Love him, love him to death. Uh, but no, I think what I was trying to say about Grand Dawson, man, good on him, finding a good woman, taking care of you know uh, each other. It's it, I loved what he did. Great speech. He had a dominant performance. Good on him. Um, next fight, Daniel Rodriguez against Alex Morano. Uh, very close fight, man. I took Alex close. Morano to win this fight on my punks parlay. Yeah, I don't blame you though. Yeah, I mean. You know? I, I, I thought that uh, Alex was going to utilize a little bit more of his grappling. Didn't do that. No. no. Uh, and, but then I also kind of figured, like, he's kind of one of those guys now that's fallen into the um, the stand-up position. Yeah. A lot of his fights end up being on the feet. You know, he's yeah. got some good stand-up. I was surprised that he was a lot faster than Daniel Rodriguez in the first round. Yeah. And they were talking about that. How D-Rod just looked like he was asleep in the first round. He kind of did. Well, he looked, he was having a hard time with, the style of Alex Morano was having a hard time figuring out the range and where he threw yeah. his punches from, where his head was going, because his head goes. And normally Alex's head goes to one side. You know, you can he he does duck his head off to one side ninety percent of the time, we'll say. But he's he's that guy that he throws a lot of shots and he yeah. throws from odd angles at times that you gotta be ready for or they're gonna catch you. So you know. I thought it was a good fight. I thought D-Rod actually, I thought he won. I thought it was uh, the right call that he got it. I thought, you know, for the most part, you know, there was split decisions in this thing, but all the right people got the win. Yeah, I agree. I agree. There was a, there was a lot of split decisions. and You're right. All the right people did get the right win. Uh, I mean, I thought it was a close round. It was a close fight. Sorry, close fight. Did you think Alex won the fight or no? You thought D-Rod did? I thought D-Rod pulled it Okay. Out. Yeah. I can see it. Like I said. I thought, was, I thought Alex won the first round, and I thought D-Rod won the next two. Yeah. And I thought yeah. Alex got tired. He did. You know? Yeah, and he that did. Was, that was the big difference in the fight. Well, Definitely. I want to say shout out D-Rod. Shout out his podcast, Culture Crooks. I edited a few episodes of that before I started with you guys. There All you right. go. Shout D -Rod. out D-Rod. 
his uh, he, his co-host Sasha, he got planted on his head in karate combat, oof. an illegal spike. Some he had oof. someone double underarmed him and just went backwards, spiked a him. Be- right a up belly up. to belly, or yeah, belly to belly, oof. going backwards, spiked him on his head, which is nice. illegal in karate combat. Hey, Overturning karate, karate to combat. Roll. <laughs> He's got to learn yeah. how to tuck and roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go with I'm, it. I'm a, I'm a victim blamer. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, Next fight, man. Raza, Ra, Ramazan. Ramazan. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's Ramazan Beck. Timurov. I know Timurov? it's Ramazan. Yeah, Ramazan. <laughs> Versus uh, Vigara, man. Well, he just. He just put it on him from the jump, yeah. John. It was right yeah. from the jump. It was. I, you know, it's hard. It's hard because when guys are making their debut, you've heard things about him, but you, I've never seen him fight. I have. You have. I've, I've seen him fight, mm-hmm. and he is. He is. A, he's a Tasmanian devil. He's just. But he throws wild shots, big winging wild shots. He's open to be hit. I looked at it and I thought this is going to be a good fight with CJ being a technically technically good fighter. Mm-hmm. You know, he's got good, you know, technique in his stand up. Kind of gets, gets into a karate stance a lot at times, you know, blades himself a lot. But as soon as he started running from him, I went, "Oh no. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> You're playing right into what he is good with and and brawling and being a a Tasmanian devil. And he's a Tasmanian devil when he's on the ground, too. Mm. He, you know, he is ground and pound. He leaves big openings, but man, he takes big chances and sometimes he has big results. So, so He's, what do you uh, do with what do you do with him now though? I mean, like you got Bruno. If we're looking at the one twenty five pound division, you know, obviously Pantoja at the top, Rival number one, Moreno number two, Albazi three, Kai Conference. But I'm not saying we jump him that high, John. No, but I'm saying we put him somewhere. Do we put him somewhere in that Cody Durden, Matt Schnell era to see what happens there? Yeah, I, I would know? tell you, I think Matt has now retired. Yeah, yeah. So, so then we. Oh, that's right. He did huh? his last fight. He did. That's yeah. right. So what if so, we put him somewhere in that Manel cop Tim Elliott position? Yes, yeah, you know, Tim Elliott is is he's he's tough for everyone. Dude, he's just he's he's a nightmare for people that you know, you look and you go, this guy's really good. Give him Tim Elliott. Shit. Yeah. You know, that, <laughs> you know, but that's I I do think uh, Manel would have problems with him is based upon uh Ramazan's got good wrestling. Yeah. He's a good wrestler and he's fast and he gets into people and he's got a lot of strength. Picks them up, dumps them down. Not that Manel's not fast and now he's got great stand up. And I think on the feet, someone like Manel would be able to uh, take advantage of the openings mm-hmm. that he gives in, in the way he throws punches and stuff. But he's he's going to be a handful for a lot of people. You, you get into that, you know, like the Cody Durden. Mm-hmm. Cody Dern is a good wrestler. He's he's not going to be able to wrestle with him. He's not going to be able to fight with him. Too much power, too much strength. It's a tough one. He's good. Uh, you know, whatever. What happened to Saeed uh, Nurmagomedov? He's one thirty-five. Is he? Yeah. Okay, so he's one thirty-five. Then you have Ulan Bekov. Ulan Bekov, yeah. Yeah, you could put something like that. Bruno Silva. You've got uh, Steve Ersig, which I don't Bruno, know if I want to Bru- do that Yeah, I don't, right think we, I don't know if I'd want to put him against Ersig, but Bruno Silva would be a good fight. That would be a good fight. Walks forward, big power for a little guy. Yep. Just, you know. Yeah, I'm just trying, to, just trying to play matchmaker here. That's all. It's all good. <laughs> all right, next fight. Pat Sabatini taking on Jonathan Pierce. JSP, not GSP, but JSP <laughs> from Tennessee. <clears throat> uh, but uh, Pat Sabatini looked good, man. He did exactly what he's supposed to do. Pat took advantage of a mistake. When he got the mistake, got the back, that face crank for a while, I was like, oh, that hurts. Mm. That hurts. That hurts. But you know, he was able to get that choke in, finally got it under the neck, man, and it was tight. There was nothing that Pierce was going to do to get out of it. And he said, you have those days. You know, Pat's been on both ends. He's had a great day like this. He's had days that, you know, it didn't go his way, and that's the same with Pierce. He's going to have a great day coming up because Pierce is a good fighter. He is hes super talented. You know, he's got a lot going for him. And, you know, losing to Pat Sabatini is not a, you know, a terrible thing because Pat Sabatini is a hell of a fighter. He's a stud. He's a stud. Yeah, he is. John, any other fights on here you want to chat about? Oh, yeah. I wanted to say something about uh, um, Junior Toff and 
Sean Sharoff, I want to say, was what it was. Mm -hmm. Sharoff. That fight right there, both of those guys almost died. <laughs> like cardio wise, they were both dying. Junior Tafa throws. 5, 000, huh? Boy, I'll tell you, I swear to God, that fight was yeah. reminding me of Dada versus Kimbo. <laughs> you know, power wise, you know, they both have power in their hands, but boy, it's dying out fast. And if it hits the ground, look out. No one, you know, the guy who's on the bottom is definitely not getting out. And the guy who's on top doesn't really have a lot of skills other than. <laughs> but Junior Tafa, way to go, brother. You you got the win. Congratulations. He's got fast hands. He really does. He does. It's just that everyone sees the blueprint, man. Take him to the ground. Yeah. Take him away from that. He's got to work on his defensive wrestling. But what about that head lettuce? Come on. <laughs> it looks you so like nice. that, huh? It flows. It was it was hanging out there in the back, man. It was almost Joe Dirte style. <laughs> Joe Dirt. <laughs> the pussy wagon. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. This that's guy. Uh... All right, guys. Hey, that's going to wrap up our uh, UFC talk. But I want to remind you guys, uh, this episode is brought to you by BetUS. And we did some great odds for you this last fight. Even though I know I came up a little off on this, Tyra oh, came wow. up short. you know. And then I also went with Park. So Park won me the thing. I went with um, Alex Morano. So if you guys would have bet on my parlay, you guys would have lost some money. My apologies, my bad. But <laughs> bottom line is, when I do my punks parlay, uh, you know, I'm actually trying to take at least one of the dogs to actually uh, nice. increase the uh, increase the, the pot a little bit. Increase the Which pot. Which is not always bit. easy. Yeah. So I went with the two favorites, and uh, look, and the ones that I went on, man, the fights were close. They were dog dead. I mean, look, Morano was a plus one eighty, I think, or one one ninety when I put when I was talking about taking him. So uh that that fact that that was such a close fight back and forth see the, and that's one of those fights where you look and you go look both guys daniel rodriguez can win this fight but yeah. alice morano can win this fight too yeah i agree that's what, that's what you got to go with you know and i chance. thought i thought if that's park, why it's called I, gambling i thought if park was gonna win it was gonna have to go the distance or it'd be like it late did. in the third round i thought if tavares was gonna win it's gonna happen in the first round i thought well park can normally weather a bunch of people's punches for the first round until he's a little bit older and his chin goes. But right now, he was able to weather the storm. Tyra, I went. I should. I actually said last week. I think Roy Vall over Tyra, and then I I listened to John. John talked me out of it. I just screwed you over. You damn you. So, <laughs> you got to go with my gut next time, man. Yeah. You know when they say the old man is wise. Nah, not this guy. <laughs> All right, guys. But hey, uh, there's uh, some more talking conversation. We had the boxing match, John. Yes, we did. We had Arthur Beterby versus Dimitri Bivol in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, the light heavyweight championship of the world online. Both men undefeated 23 and 0 for Dimitri mm -hmm. and 20 and 0 for Arthur. And I tell you what, it was a close fight. It, it was, was a really close fight. It was a, you know, good fight. Yeah, it was good as far as, you know, they, Good action by both. They both, you know, worked. It wasn't the most exciting fight, you know, there yeah. was. But uh, I had it scored even. At the end of the 12th round, I had it as a draw. I, I was shocked by the 116. I'm like, shut up. But, you know? but John, in all fairness, when fights are that close and rounds are that close, it's easy to have yeah. one that's skewed a little bit more than the other. Sure. You know, sure. like you added a draw. Uh, I, I, um, I could have seen it going either way, but I, I can see like what happens is I, I honestly believe this judges. They're like, Oh, that guy won that round, even though he won it by a small margin. And then they see the next round. Like it's a very, it's a very similar round. Well, I gave the, I gave the last round to that same Can't guy. Do that. I know, but that, and I think judges do that. I then think they do that. Shitty judge. I think in the, I honestly believe they're like, well, I you don't the guy give the last someone round. a round because they did better. Okay. I gave them around because they did the same because they, they won round. the round, and I gave them the round. I gave them the round last round. It's, you know, and... you know. Oh, they did better than they did the prior round. No, I don't no, give no. Them I, around. You're mis. No, no, you're misunderstanding. I'm not misunderstanding anything. No, I, I said, understand what you're saying. If I gave him round one, if I gave uh, better be if I gave him the first round, yeah, and then you had, the to, same you had exact to give the first thing, round to Bibble. And okay, no, I'm just. I'm, <laughs> And then the same exact thing happened in the second round. It was a very close round, but I said Bitter Bia basically won the same won the same way. I would give him the second the same round. I'd be okay. Look, he won the second round. My point is, is that it looked like to me that Bivol was the one kind of retreating on his back foot. 
Bitter Biov had less of an output, but I felt like his shots had a little bit more impact. Yeah, I went with Bitter Biov this this uh, this last week. When we were talking yeah. about it. Yeah, I had did. him taking the fight. You went with Bivol, and um, it, it just was one of those fights where I, it's a toss, man. It could have went either way in this fight. Absolutely. I thought, and we talk. I looked at this. I I went all the way back to John Mugabe. I don't know if you if you remember that name. There was a guy named John the Beast Mugabe. He was from England. Okay. Uh, I want to say I want to say he was Ugandan, but I could be wrong as far as where he was originally from. But John the Beast Mugabe, at a certain point in his career, was thirty one and zero with thirty one knockouts. Wow. And he's a middleweight fighter, and, he's, and middleweight champion of the world is marvelous Marvin Hagler. And that was a huge fight. I mean, everyone was waiting for it because here was that's that's John the Beast Mugabe right there, baby. Mm-hmm. And so it was one of those where it, it taught me the whole thing of you know power is great. And I, I, I love Joe Frazier, and Joe Frazier was able to beat Ali the first time. But it's always the boxer when you look at it, the person that's got the better boxing because it's called boxing. You know, and has a better team, usually ends up winning more of those fights when it's the puncher versus the boxer. And that was the whole reason I looked at this. I mean, you know, they're very, they're both great. Uh, obviously, Bitter Beaver has got more power. He, you know, has got big time knockout power, but Bivol is a hell of a boxer and he yeah. controls range very well. So I looked and I said, well, I'll go with the boxer based upon what I've seen in the past because, like, marvelous Marvin Hagler, who had power, but just boxed the ears off of. Mugabe. Yeah. This one, I had this one as even. And so, you know, they showed why they were both undefeated and they're both really good. But the one thing that I did see after the fight, did you see, you know, Bivol has had this, like, uh, he has a wife that he's now divorcing mm-hmm. and she's watching the fight and it gets to the end. And when they, they give the decision to bitter beef, she's all excited. And I go, you're a bitch. Wow. <laughs> She's all, yes, Arthur, yes, Arthur. I was like, wow. That right there, okay. What do they call it? The story of two tales or something like that? Boy, I'll tell you. you yeah. Remember that? Grant Dawson a, over here with his wife and fucking. There you go. This there was guy a, over here. Oh. I can't remember. But there's a, there was a soccer star. who I think he was from Moroccan. And uh, he got married to this just Egyptian. fucking sm- Egyptian. Yeah. The smoke show, man. I mean, she was just hot. Some What's- model. But he mm-hmm. signed everything over to his mom. Yep. Everything she, went to his mom's name. And she went and divorced him like three or four years later. And he had nothing. <laughs> and I just said, that's the smartest dude yeah. I've ever seen. He could trust his mom that much. That's that's perfect. Yeah, he was uh, brilliant. So his wife filed for divorce. And then we went to see what what he owned. What the, yes. Okay, I want 50% of everything. Uh, exactly. And he, they're like, he doesn't own anything. He doesn't own anything. She's like, what? He's got I, I got an even better story for one. There was a, a rich guy. Uh, he married this, uh, you know, this girl. He was with her for a long time. Uh, but they were, he married, she was probably about 10 years, 15 years younger than him. He was already successful. They got married. Well, there he took her to the Dominican Republic for his, their honeymoon. Well, the Dominican Republic, you only need one party to file for divorce. So he went there, filed for divorce on their honeymoon. They were, then she like eighteen years later she filed for divorce. Basically, they're like, "Oh, you've been divorced for eighteen years." <laughs> That's awesome. She never knew. Woo. Yeah. Who left? Oh. Let's see. Who left uh, everything to his mom? What was his so- the soccer guy's name? I don't God. know. Uh, what Hakimi. a brilliant son, bitch. What is it? Hakimi. Okay. Yep. Ashraf. Brilliant. Uh, Ashraf. Brilliant. Hakimi. Yeah. He is Moroccan, John. I thought he was Egyptian, okay. but he is Moroccan. Yeah. Brilliant, man. Brilliant. I, I was watching that uh, a while back about how he did that. Good for him, man. He said, yeah. wife of Moroccan soccer mob star loses divorce settlement uh, as. Wife of Moroccan soccer uh, star mom, to soccer star loses settlement. Wife his fortune is in his mother's name. Okay, That's wife great. of soccer star loses yeah. settlement. It's got to be. Yeah. So got great. it. So great. I love uh, the courts. <laughs> we got we got one more thing for you guys that we're gonna have a little fun with this, but uh, it's the Conor McGregor situation. Uh, oh, <laughs> this was so Dave funny. Feldman. I'm sorry. Jeez, man. Jeez. <laughs> 
There was apparently uh, there was a good fight between two it guys. It was a really good fight. It was a good Spain. fight. Yeah. Okay. I saw it. Conor McGregor's there, obviously two sheets to the win. And uh he's inside the he's I want to say cage, inside the In, ring. Inside the ring. And Jay Feldman goes, We're gonna give these guys a bonus, right? Connor grabs the mic and does what, John? We're not gonna only give them a bonus. We're gonna double their pay. <laughs> double their play and a bonus. <laughs> I was like, What? And Dave Feldman's <laughs> face was the best. He's just, holding the mic, he's like, What? Just changed. <laughs> just changed. Who's doing this? My farm needs the earth, the air, and the water. I get my energy going on Element Electrolyte Drink Mix. Clean, good-tasting energy that feeds me like I feed my plants and animals. And after a long day on the tractor, when it's time to shoot the podcast, I drink Element so that I can stay energized and stay salty. Let's get it on. Hey, yeah, John. <laughs> Connor is all about the fighters, and I love oh. that about him. <laughs> yeah. Until uh, he has to be the one paying for oh. it. Uh, there is look, no way he is paying for that. Dave I Feldman's don't think so. Just, I think just, Dave Feldman's paying for it. Oh, jeez, man. I don't know what you... Like, what do you do in that situation? Well, let's be honest. Okay, and, and this, is, this is where the trouble becomes, is because if you're Dave Feldman, you got two choices. Pay them double or be smart and say, hey, I know he said that. Can't do it. Now you're going to have managers and stuff saying, whoa, Connor said. Yeah, Connor said a lot of things. What does the contract say? Connor's still part owner, though. So coming out of one of the owner's mouths. Yeah. What does the contract say? No, I get it. Yeah, that's really like. But isn't it isn't honest. A verbal? Couldn't that be construed as a verbal contract? Like basically, he said you could pay me. You that. could you could, could try. try, yeah. You could try to, you know, but to go to court with it. But you know, I don't know. I just look and it's like, I think it's great that Connor gets excited. I think it's great that he's part of Bear Knuckle Fighting Championships. But I think he's got to be careful what he says because it's gonna make him. John, go did you see into that? Did you see that live stuff he was doing for betting? It was like a live oh. online like betting thing he was doing. No. And all the shit that came out of his mouth, man. He was talking about like, screaming at Floyd Mayweather, talking about all this other stuff. It's very obvious that do not leave this guy alone with a microphone. Like, do not <laughs> give him, do not give him a microphone. Uh, if you didn't learn anything from the Floyd May Mayweather tour, uh, media tour for that fight, like the things that come out of his mouth, don't give him the microphone, especially at the end of the night yeah. after a good fight. Well, not even after the good fight. After he's had, yeah, quite a quite a few to tilt back. Oh man, I just I can just see it going through. I mean, look, and the thing is, Dave Feldman was all on board on giving bonuses. So maybe he says, "Look, you know what? Look, the, the contract states that we're not, you know, this much, but we, I do want to give you guys a bonus. We're not yeah. doing double the pay. Yeah. I think that's fair. Look, if you're a fighter, Absolutely you're going, hey, fair. this is great. You know what you, you were fighting for, and you get yeah. you get a bonus on top of it. Yeah, no one owes you the bonus. Your asses off. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I'm all for it. Like, I'm all for it for supporting you guys. Look, he obviously was uh, a couple of drinks in, so we're not going to take anything he had to say seriously. But I, I think well, next time you invite him into the ring, I'm not giving him the mic. Yeah. I can tell you that. <laughs> I can tell you that. Oh, man. But I thought that was a, that was a good, funny little exchange that I just oh, saw Dave funny. Feldman's face. I just, Dave Feldman's face went like, hmm? he was like, what? Hmm? <laughs> Wait, what are you talking about? Bro, Reggie. And he was trying to keep a hold of the mic. He had like the mic. He's like, no, give it back to me. Give it back to me before you say something stupid. There it is right yeah. there. Yeah, let me see. Let me see what, uh, can you hear? Let me, you know what? Let Here, I think it. I can pull it up. Yeah, I'm going to put it on there. This is hilarious. Come on, man. That was man. freaking hysterical. I think it was hilarious. He fucking, was it on what? MMA Junkie? What was it on? I just thought it was. Oh, there was another one we got to talk about. No, 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 no. Listen, we're going to do bonuses, yes, for both these gentlemen, as well as a multitude of other people that fought on this card. But what we're going to do for these two gentlemen, as well as a bonus, is double the purse. They're getting double pay. That's it, Trey. Well done, gentlemen. Yes, I'm getting double pay. You can't. Thank you for your sense. You're getting double.
double the pay. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Oh, oh shit. Love Do you it. remember the movie Cocktail with Tom Cruise? Oh yeah. Okay. At the very remember his really cheap uncle that owned the bar that he started off in? Yeah. And at the end his you know the girl that he's been trying to like, you know, they he got pregnant or whatever and they're having the baby and then they go back and they own the bar now or they're working at the bar or they're doing something at the bar. They're going to open up Cocktails and Dreams, right? At the end of the movie. And he turns to it because his uncle is now the investor in his cocktail and dreams. And he turns to everyone after he finds out he's having twins. Tom Cruise, he goes, drinks are on the house. And the uncle goes, no, 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 no. He's just, starts, no, absolutely. Like, no, no, he doesn't know what he's doing. Oh, no, yeah. It. But yeah, it was great, man. It's great. It you sent me a thing. What? You sent me a thing on uh, John McPhee talking about kicking uh, Tim Kennedy's ass. Yeah, what was that? Here, hold on. We're gonna, I'm going to play it. I'm not going to show it, but I'll, I'll play the the works. It's on Sean Ryan's podcast. Okay, but before, before you play Go ahead. It, yes. Why would you say that? Because he did. But yeah, but John, he was number like eight. Oh, that, that's, that's the point, Josh. This is the point. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Let's, let's play it. Okay. I'm going to play <laughs> it off because look at John McPhee was, he was in Delta. Okay, Delta is the Army's version of Navy mm-hmm. SEAL. Obviously, Tim Kennedy was Special Forces and Green Beret. Ranger, and stuff, yeah. So, Ranger. Mm-hmm. So, this is, he's talking to Sean. Uh, Sean asked him the question about it, so. Yeah, hold on. Damn it, John. I know. I screwed, well, because it, it's, it's passed it by, so hold on. Mm-hmm. to tune him up yeah i put him down in the dirt one day yeah what instigated that man it's just a f- incessant talking shit about kicking everybody's ass you know what i mean and then like one day i was just like you're gonna kick all of our asses yeah all of our asses yeah i was like yo meet me at the f- dojo at midnight and then what he didn't know is while he was all poopy out kicking rocks or mad at whatever he was mad at all the guys were like yo i'll be at the dojo i want a piece of this action and then i was just like look we're gonna fight in the order of rank and i'd say timmy did well for i don't know two three four guys i don't fucking know but he couldn't beat us all i was second to last because the captain went last i was like well this is it. It's got to be on me. And I just made sure in the time I had, I bloodied him up and I made sure he was down. And then all I did is I whispered in his ear, like, I hope we don't have to have this talk again. And I walked out. Me and the guys walked out, left him in there laying on the ground. You know what I mean? You did. Oof. Okay. So, you know, th- th- that's all great. But I think. Is it, is it really though, John? Well, no, no. Here's the, here's the point. Go ahead. The people need to think about it. You know, I'm sure Tim was brash and yeah. talk talk shit. Okay, he was man enough to fucking not back out when you brought everybody and had everyone standing in a fucking dojo saying, "Oh no, no, you said you could call over." So he said, "All right, let's go." You got to give it to him, man. You know, he didn't back down. And this guy, you know, you're a big stud. After after you know, because he says, "Oh, I mean, two, three, four. So I'm sure Tim went through. Four, five, six, seven. Before you know, hey, I don't care who you are. You know, you get tired. And you got people that are, you know, coming at you one after the other. You got to get beat. That's just the way it is. But he was man enough to sit there and not back down from it and say, "Okay, let's go." That's the way I look at it. So I don't see anything wrong with Tim. I see a lot wrong with him. Yeah, I, I can also see the other side. I see the flip side as well. Is sure. that when you have a team in a unit that you're trying to build camaraderie with and you always have one person who's just like, but yeah, I'm better than you guys because I can whoop all your asses instead of trying to be somebody that builds up everyone. Well, let's let me but show he, you more. But he's not part of Delta. <clears throat> I, I don't know what that, like I said, I don't know what that whole scenario was. Yeah. Because it sounded like he was part of the, I, just from what I get, just by watching the video, nothing else, not knowing any other information. It was... It sounded like that he was part of their team. And then it was like, oh, I don't think so. You know- Tim was a sniper, mm-hmm. but he wasn't part of Delta. So I, I'm just going based off of when I'm watching the video. That's all I saw. John was just that. I thought that was like a team of guys that he worked with and they got tired of Tim just running around saying, I could, you know, I'll beat your ass. Da, 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 da. 
And it was like, yeah, hey, we're all want to get in on this. I I agree with you that uh, Tim not stepping away. Yep. And when walking in and seeing everyone going, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just see what happens. Let's go. That's yeah, let's it. see it. But I guess for me on the flip, it's saying. Because you know, look at even yeah. you, you know, I can take a couple and then I'm going to get tired and I'm going to get into having problems. Yeah, because these guys are not chumps either. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's not like they're Joe Bay, man. Yeah, it's these like, are barstool and guys. And, and they all fucking trained. Yeah, so this it's is like barstool you know, guys. These, these are yeah. guys, you know, coming off the bar, fucking with a cigarette in their mouth and a, and a whiskey. And like, no, these guys are actually, they train on a daily basis, trying to make each other better. So, uh, yeah, I get it. But I guess for me and this guy, I was like, man, it seems a little weird, man, that like, you're on a on a public forum telling everyone that yeah I, I waited what. for him to get tired and then I beat him up exactly well that, that my, my whole thing is you know that's the kind of thing it, it's like that's like when we're talking about you know training in the gym and you get the best of someone you don't talk about that you know it he knows it you don't talk about it I I looked at it a little bit differently I I see where Go you're ahead. coming from I looked at it like the guy who sat out all the rounds against the wall and then decided to come in on my last round when I was done. That's what he tired. is. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's what, what I'm I saying. At it. You don't talk about that. <laughs> it wasn't just the talk. It was like, but that's what you, that's what you did. Yes. Like, I'm not just saying like that. The talking about it is definitely a no, no, but then to actually, but the, to brag about that, that's what you did. <laughs> that, it just was, it was baffled me a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When he said, I John. bloodied him up, and I said, you know, and I whispered in his ear, I'm like, eh, yeah, motherfucker. I had a black bull that yeah. worked for me, and uh, he came over, like, he he ended up leaving, like, uh, we came, I wouldn't say we came up together, um, but he ended up, like, training at AKA for a while, and then when I opened my gym, he was like, he lived near my gym, he's like, I'll just start, you know, coming over here, and then he asked if he could teach, and he was, he it was really good with people, so, um, you know, he started teaching and stuff. But he was, he had just got his black belt, uh, I think under Dave Camarillo. And uh, and he was just kind of that, sorry, he was a brown belt. He wasn't a black belt, he was a brown belt. So he came over and he wouldn't roll with any of the guys that would give him a challenge. Any of my purple belts or any of my blue belts, anyone that would really try to like push him, he wouldn't roll with until the, towards the end. Until they were tired. Until after tired. we had rolled four or five rounds and they were a little bit more tired and this and that. And even then, if they were younger and in, in a decent shape, they wouldn't roll with them. And I was just like, and I used to tell them, like, you can't do that, man. Like, you can't. You got to roll, take your licks like everybody else. Yeah. And it was like this, uh, I believe in a higher, like, it's like this hierarchy of like, I've worked, I put my stripes in. Yeah, you're the one supposed mm. to be leading by example, dude. Like, anyways, but this is kind of what it felt like. He's the guy that sat out at the end. It's just me and the captain. Yeah. Okay, well, like, I don't know. I guess for me, you should have maybe went first, so maybe one of the other guys could have taken it to him. You should have made him more tired in the beginning. Got him tired, yeah. and then everyone else could have got their licks on him. Especially them. if you were the one that didn't like what he was saying. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, I would have I just, I just laughed at it. It's like, yeah. well, if, you, if you're proud of that moment, eh, I'm more proud of what the way Tim just handled it like Madison. All right, let's go. Yeah, fuck okay. it. Let's just see what happens. Yeah. You know, the the the... Before a majority of the decisions I make in my life, I usually just say, ah, fuck it. Let's just see what happens. <laughs> yeah, dude, least... the ah, fuck it has made a lot of decisions in my life. It definitely has. It's not always good, though. <laughs> definitely has. Hey, guys, uh, make sure you sign up for our membership program here on YouTube, 4 dollars for um, our giveaways that we do on a monthly basis that we'll be trying to do on a monthly basis. And then also to our one ninety nine for the little icon next to your name. So we do our super chats on our live super chats. On Tuesday nights, you guys, we answer your guys' questions first. And we want to thank you guys for continuing to support us. Also, this show is brought to you by BetUS, OnlyFans, and Element, which I've actually just polished off my Element right here. Bam, right there. Use our link down below in the descriptions. But every purchase you use, or sorry, every time you purchase through our link in the Element, through Element, uh, they will send you a bonus package of product. You, it depends on what it is. Uh, sometimes it'll be some sparkling. Sometimes it'll be a package, like a mixed package of their um, powder that you mix in with their, with their mixers. And uh, man, I want to thank you guys for continuing to support us, man. And it's been awesome. John, take it away. Yeah. For everyone out there, I hope you are having a fantastic weekend. Continue on with that. Do something good for someone. Be kind to people. 
if you can. Make their life better, and we will see you.